Lipton Tea and Lipton Soup present Inner Sanctum Mysteries starring Miriam Hopkins. Good evening, friends of the Inner Sanctum. This is your host, Raymond, ready as always to provide you with your weekly ration of screams, gurgles, and blood. All in a spirit of gentle fun, I have no other object in mind. Except to reduce you to sniveling wrecks of nerves and shudders. <laughs> have you got a white sheet handy? You might uh, wrap it around yourself in case a ghost shows up. You'll think you're in the business and pass right on through you. <laughs> now, Mr. Raymond, don't be so silly. You know there are no such things as ghosts. Who said that? Oh, hello, Mary Bennett. So, you don't believe in ghosts, huh? And, uh... What's that standing behind you, huh? Oh! Oh, you shouldn't have done that. Frightening me that way. Shame on you. Oh, I'm sorry, Mary. Can I make amends? Well, you might... You might tell the folks how much you enjoy Lipton tea. Oh, gladly, gladly. Friends, just the other day, a ghost and I were having a conversation about Lipton tea Now, and... here, here, here. Enough of that. Nobody is interested in what you and the ghost said about Lipton tea. Oh. No. Let's talk about real people and the solid pleasure they get from Lipton. They drink it at mealtimes. They serve it when friends drop in for a visit. And, of course, they often brew themselves a cup of Lipton's during the day. Just because it's so nice to relax and enjoy that famous brisk flavor. Oh, by the way, that word brisk, B-R-I-S-K, is one that tea experts use. Brisk means that Lipton's always tastes tangy and bracing. It's never flat or wishy-washy. Yes, you just don't, don't know how good tea can be until you know how good Lipton's is. Okay, Mary, uh, suppose you go fry me a cup of tea. But uh, keep the kitchen door open because you're about to hear the story of the Bog Oak Necklace. It's an original radio play by David Driscoll. And our heroine tonight is that beautiful star of stage and screen, Miss Miriam Hopkins, who will play the role of... Emily. Now, be calm, be calm. There's nobody standing behind you. At least nobody you can see. <laughs> At the edge of a lake in a small New England town, two men are busy digging an excavation. Must have been like a cave around here once, huh? Mm. Yeah, old Miss Bristow used to own this property before she sold it to this here city man who's building. There used to be a fine apple orchard right up there. And was all fine trees once. Well, uh, let's dig. That's what we're getting paid for. Hey, hey. What's the matter with you, Paulie? Look down there what I just hit with my shovel. Huh? Oh, bone. Oh, Cow, I expect. Cow? That ain't no cow bone, Jerry. Hey, Paulie. Huh? Look. Look at this with the bone. Yeah, I, I see it. And you call it a cow bone now? No, I don't. This here must have been a graveyard once. This here was never no graveyard. The river used to come right up to here almost before the big flood. Before they built the dam. Hey, hey what are you doing? Get your coat and hat. You bringing that with you? Of course I am. Hat and... This. Yeah, but there, there must be a skull here, too. Of course there must be. But we don't have to look for that, Polly. But in our job. Come on. Jerry and me was digging away there, Mr. Warren, down towards the river. And all of a sudden, Jerry kind of yelled. And when I asked him what's the matter, he... Shows me this leg bone. So I looks and there's the skeleton right at his feet. I see. So I figure you being the county attorney here, you're the man who ought to know first. Uh, yes. Uh, now, this place by the river that you're talking about, it's the land that city man bought to build a home on? Yeah, that's right. He, he bought it from old Miss Emily Bristow. And, and then we found this, too, around the... Well, I... I should call it the neck. That is where the neck would be. <gasps> it's a, 
Anything wrong, Mr. Warren? Where did you say you found this bone and this necklace? Well, Jerry and me is making a trench for a water pipe, and we're digging where the old riverbank used to be. Right near the river edge. Hey, leave the necklace with me. <laughs> if I need any more help, I'll get in touch with you. That's all. Yeah, yeah yes, sir. Forty years. Forty years. Emily. Emily Bristol. What do you want with me after 40 years, Andrew? Look, Emily. Well, these are old woman's eyes. Look closer. Take that away. Take it away. The bark oak necklace, Emily. Do you remember? Presented to Miss Emily Bristow on her 24th birthday by... by Andrew Warren. Where did you get it, Andrew? It was found at the river edge. On the property you've just sold. Daisy. Daisy. It's come back to us, Emily. After all these years. It's come back to us. The bark oak necklace... Necklace that meant the death of your sister, Daisy. Oh, Andrew. Oh, Andrew, darling. Daisy, there aren't two people anywhere as happy as we are. Of course not. Um, may I tell Emily? Why, yes. Yes, I suppose so. Oh. After all, she's your sister. She should know. Good night, darling. Look at that moon. Smiling at you. Oh. I'm going to close my eyes, and I won't open them until you're down the road out of sight. Good night, sweetheart. Oh. Good night. Good night, sweetheart. Good night, moon. Good... Oh, oh. Young ladies shouldn't stand staring at the moon that way. Oh, Emily. You frightened me so. I... Did I? Mm. You had a nice drive with Andrew in the moonlight, I hope. Mm-hmm. Emily... Andrew, uh... Andrew... Yes? Andrew and I... We're... Oh, darling. How will I ever stop my heart from beating so I can't... Let me say it for you. You're engaged. There you are. It was easy, wasn't it? For you? You've no idea how easy it was for me. Emily. Right here. Emily. I wanted to see you so badly. She's already told me, Andrew. Emily, I want you to understand about this. I know how this must hurt you. You've got to break it off. You've got to. You can't marry her. Andrew, listen to me. Please. Please marry me. I beg you. Emily, we must be sensible. I beg you. If you love me, Emily, you must let me do what I feel is right. I can't let you marry Daisy. You're mine. I must have you. If not me, Andrew, no one. No one else at all. It's too late now. Forgive me. I'll never forgive you. And I'll never let you go. Emily. Never. Never, never. Emily. Emily, are you asleep? Go to bed, Daisy. Oh, Emily, don't be cross. I can't sleep. <laughs> you can't sleep? Huh? No, I'm so excited. Why, Emily, you're still dressed, too. Oh, so I am. What's the matter, dear? Don't you feel well? Oh, I feel very well. Thank you, Daisy. Emily, what's the matter? Why do you use that tone with me? Oh, darling, you're not feeling well, are you? I can tell by the look on your face. Oh, come on. Come on out into the night. The moon is full, and, and, and let's walk up to the apple orchard. After all, Emily, even though we're going to be separated, it won't be forever. <laughs> Oh, 
Aren't you afraid to be out here at night? Afraid? Afraid of what? We are at the end of the apple orchard. There's the little patch that goes down the river. I think you'd better go back now. I go back? Well, what'll you do? I'm going to stay here. I wouldn't dream of going back to the house alone. I thought you weren't afraid. All alone? Of course I'd be afraid all alone. Daisy, I don't want you to marry Andrew. Emily? You know what you've just said? Certainly. Why, I... Oh, Emily, I'm surprised at you. Well, you're jealous. Mm, That's right. I want you to write to Andrew and tell him that you've thought it over and that you've decided you don't love him and you're not going to marry him. How dare you speak to me that way? Now, get out of my way. I'll never talk to you again as long as I live. Have you thought that you mayn't have very long to live? Emily! Emily, I'll scream! No, you won't scream. You won't scream at all. And do you know why? Down in that little pigeon heart of yours, you're frightened. That's right. Let go of my arms. You're hitting me. You're out of your mind, Emily. I'll let you go when you promise to write that letter. I promise. I I promise, Emily. Now let go of me. As soon as we get back. Yes, yes, yes. And don't you dare breathe a word of this to anyone ever as long as you live. I promise. I promise. I... Now, I think we understand who loves Andrew. I'll let you go. You don't know how close you came. Come back here, Daisy. You'd run away, would you? (laughs) Emily! Emily, I wasn't running away. Please let me go. What are you doing with that necklace? I don't! No! I I knew I couldn't trust you. (laughs) I knew Uh, I never should have told you. Help! Stop, Emily! You're joking me. I I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Oh, pity about little Emily, though. Just think what a wonderful hangman she'd have made if she'd been born a girl. Kind of cute, huh? Being taken for a little swing by a girl. <laughs> what a terrible woman she is, Mr. Raymond. Oh, now, listen, I like Emily. She's so inventive. Most women will do anything for a necklace, but only Emily knows what to do with a necklace. <laughs> now, please, <laughs> you know very well that the only thing you can do with a necklace is wear it. Oh, yeah. Well, the only thing you can do with Lipton tea is drink it. Well, what's wrong with that? (laughs) And, Mr. Raymond, maybe you don't realize how often folks do drink Lipton tea. Why, it's the perfect beverage for so many occasions. And that's why it makes sense to have a good supply on hand to buy the larger, more economical size packages. And it is more economical that way, too. Oh, yes. It's wise to have a large size package of Lipton tea on your shelf because that well-known brisk flavor, that bracing, full-bodied taste, makes Lipton's always welcome. Hmm. That uh, gives me an idea. Maybe we should have had Emily and little Daisy talk out their quarrel over a cup of Lipton tea. (laughs) Oh, man, that'd be chummy. But it's too late now. Daisy is stretched out on the ground with a bog oak necklace twisted tight. Around her neck. She's not sleeping now. She's just dead to the world. (laughs) So, let's get back to our star, Miss Miriam Hopkins, who plays the role of Emily. Daisy, get up. Get up this minute and stop teasing me. You're not hurt that bad, and you know you're not. Please get up. Daisy, you're frightening me. Daisy. Daisy, you're... You're acting... Just as though you were... You were... Dead. I am dead, Emily. You murdered me. You strangled me with the bog oak necklace. You see... You see, you wouldn't be talking to me if you were dead. You've killed your own sister, Emily. Because you were jealous. That voice, that Daisy's voice. But your lips are not moving. How can you be speaking to me, Daisy, when your lips are not moving? They'll find me here in the orchard. With 
your necklace around my neck. And they'll know you did it. And they'll punish you. You'll never be allowed to marry Andrew. I will marry him. I will. Oh, what am I saying? Who am I talking to? Somebody's speaking to me with Daisy's voice. And all your life I'll be speaking to you. Just like this. Because you murdered me with the bar oak necklace. I must do something. I must get some help. I'm somewhere I must get some help. She can't be dead. I I just pulled the necklace a little bit, not tightly at all. You pulled it very <laughs> tightly, Emily. Look at my neck and you see. You see how tightly you twisted the necklace. Stop it. Stop talking to me. I'll never leave you, Emily. Never as long as you live. You are dead, aren't you? I murdered you. Something dreadful will happen to me. I've got to do something. What, what can I do? The river. I'm near the river. Stone, yes. With twine. Strong twine. Wound around the stones and tied the stones to her. And I could throw her into the water from the crag on the hill. And the stones would make her sink to the bottom. And then she'd never come back. Never. And... Who would know? You know, Emily. Maybe, maybe when I get back to her, she'll be moving and I'll talk to her. No, she is dead. She is. Oh, I, I'm running in the wrong direction. It was over there that I, I killed her. It couldn't have been because... Because she's not there. She... It was right here. And Daisy's gone. She got up and walked away somewhere. She's alive. Emily. Oh. I found her, Emily. Strangled to death. I know nothing about it. What are you doing then with that twine in your hand? You wanted to tie stones to her, didn't you? Throw her in the river. I... I killed her because I was jealous. You're as guilty as I am. Because you should have married me. Yes, I am as guilty as you are. What will become of me now? All my hopes, my ambitions. If we can get rid of the body, then we can get married after all. It'll only take a little while for people to forget and Then we can go away somewhere. I never want to look at you again as long as I live. I hate you. I came back here to speak to you again. I wanted to tell you I'd done a wrong thing. That I ought to marry you. I wanted to arrange with you about Daisy. How we could tell her without hurting her too much. I was heading toward your window when I saw her. Strangled with a bog oak necklace. What have you done with the... Exactly what you plan to do. Because no woman would have the strength to do it. I had rope in my rowboat. I tied stones to the body. Rode a bit into the river with it. Dropped it overboard. The plan works, you're safe. If it doesn't, he'll die. And I'll go to prison. I'm going now. The moon is down already. Soon it will be dawn. The necklace. What did you do with the necklace? I left it where it was, around her neck. Sound, the sound the necklace makes. I have heard it every night for 40 years. 40 years. Now she's come back to us. To me. 
tell me, Andrew. Where was it found? She's been there at the bottom of the river all this time. Oh. During the flood last year, the skeleton must have been swept into that old sewer. Twine probably rotted away a long time ago. That's the only explanation I can give. Watching. Down there at the bottom of the river, watching. I'm going now, Emily. Probably the last time we'll ever see each other. I'll leave the necklace with you. It was to you I gave it. Forty years ago. Emily. What's that? What? The, the voice. The, the voice. I'm going. Don't leave me, Andrew. Don't leave me. He'll leave us, Emily. He'll leave the two sisters alone. Together. Andrew. We're alone now, Emily. Just as we used to be. You and I and the necklace. No. Come, Emily. Let's take a walk as we used to in the old apple orchard. No. No. Come, come. It's getting dark. Dark. No, I, I've not been near that orchard in 40 years. Come, Emily. With me. But I'm old. No, you're young. As young as I am. Come with me. We'll tell each other little secrets, won't we, Emily? Just as we used to. Uh, yes. The yes. crickets will be chirping and the moon coming up. All as it used to be. Yes. And you'll be wearing your necklace. The bark oak necklace that Andrew gave you when he thought he loved you instead of me. You'll wear it the way you used to when you'd steal up there to the orchard to meet him. Remember when he used to roll to the bottom of the hill and wait for you, and you could stand in the orchard until you heard him whistle? Yes. Yes. Emily. Yes. You've forgotten something. Forgotten. The necklace. The bog oak necklace. Oh. Wear it, Emily. Come, Emily, come. He's waiting. Yes. Listen. Oh. Andrew's whistling for you. Answer it, dear. Go on. I, I can't whistle. That's strange. You must run faster, Emily, faster. Oh, you must run so oh. much faster. Through the apple tree, oh. bending beneath the branches. Oh. He may not wait. <laughs> Oh, Lord. Breath is. Apple trees. The branches, they're in my way. I can't bend over. Faster, faster. He may run off with Daisy. No. no. I'm coming, Andrew. I'm coming. Wait for me, Andrew. Wait for me. Oh. oh, that necklace. Emily, you caught it in a branch. Turn around, Emily. Turn around. Turn around. And loosen it. Turn quickly, Emily. That's the way my voice sounded one night long ago. When I wore the bark of necklace. When I, too, was strangled by the bark of necklace. Come, come. It's so cool here in the river.
Daisy, Daisy, tell me your answer true. Who gets choked first, me a lovely you? If you'll be the first to strangle, I'd appreciate your angle. And when I learn that it's now my turn, I'll gargle as nice as you. <laughs> what awful words to sing to such a nice song. Oh, but listen, I sing so well, and I can recite, too. Shall I recite you something suitable? Say a uh, mother goose rhyme, huh? Mr. Raymond, you don't know any mother goose. Is that so? Well, I know one that you love. Listen. Polly, put the kettle on. Polly, put the kettle on. Polly, put the kettle on, and we'll all have tea. Well, that's fine. Only I hope Polly makes sure that it's Lipton tea. Naturally. But I suppose there's little doubt that she'll use Lipton. Because, after all, more people drink Lipton tea than any other brand. The reason for that is Lipton's famous brisk flavor. Yes, Lipton tea is never flat or insipid. It always tastes full-bodied and, and vigorous. And, well, I guess it's all summed up by that word brisk. Yes, folks, brisk is the word that the tea experts use when they talk about Lipton tea. So try it real soon, won't you? <laughs> They say... Of course, I just tell you what the gossip is in the morgues I visit. They say that Daisy and Emily can be seen almost any moonlit night. Skull, gently touching skull, floating through the old apple orchard as of yore. If you'd like them in your home, you could use their ration coupon. Outside of rattling a bit when the wind blows, they're very nice and companionable, especially on dark nights. And in the summer, you can always use them for scarecrows in your victory garden. <laughs> by the way, this month's Inner Sanctum mystery novel is The Outsider by A.E. Martin. And I was really trying to close that there squeaking door until next week at the same time when Lipton tea and Lipton soup will once again bring you another inner sanctum mystery produced under the direction of Hyman Brown. So until then, good night. Pleasant dreams. Mm. I wonder what our grandmothers would have said if they had heard about Lipton's noodle soup. I'll bet they wouldn't have believed it possible that a delicious chicken noodle soup could come ready to make in an envelope. But if they'd tasted Lipton, they would have agreed that it has an old-fashioned, homemade flavor, that it tastes just like the kind of chicken soup they used to make themselves. And Lipton's is economical, too. It costs less and makes more than canned soups. So, folks... Be sure to try Lipton's Noodle Soup. And be sure to tune in next Tuesday night for another Inner Sanctum Mystery. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.